record on this computer. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so uh, today we're going to work on lesson six. And it's creating, this is a way of creating soft masks. And for your first ass assignment, the postcard assignment, if you include people or you want to um, maybe strip out an image of a dog or a lion or something and combine it with other elements, then this is the way to do it. Um, so it's just another way of making a selection um, that can be really, really useful. That's one of the things that we're doing in here. As you can see that we're isolating the girl so that we can see this um, background here, this little checkerboard back background. Um, what we want to do, and I think what we want to do a little bit better job than what they have done, is to be able to include some of these little strands of hair. Because that's kind of the telltale sign that an, uh, an object has been stripped from its background is when you see all of these hard edges. And I think we can do a better job. And I think in the past couple of versions of um, Photoshop, they've improved on, on that. So that's what we'll start with. Um, a couple of other things that we'll do too in here is that we're going to add a shadow. So you can see this little drop. This It's not a drop shadow, but it is a shadow by um, copying a layer and fixing it and making it, uh, you know, changing the color of it. And we can soften the edges if we wanted to. And we can uh, skew it a little bit so that it's, a, you know, a big shadow on the wall back here. Um, we're also going to tilt her head back. And that's also a pretty cool effect. Um, we're going to use puppet warp for that. Okay, and that'll be really nice. And then the last thing that we'll do is we're going to colorize her glasses. We're going to make a selection of just her glasses. And then we're going to change the color of them. So those are principally the things that we're going to do. But really, the, um, they're all valuable. But the one that I think is most important is isolating her. So how you do that? Um, a couple of different ways. In past versions, they had us use the quick selection tool first. Um, I'm going to use it, but I'm going to use the object selection first and make sure that um, the model here is that layer is selected. And then I'm going to click and drag over her. Not being, you know. And you can see um, immediately that she's selected pretty well. But if I zoom in, and surprisingly enough, right in here is where we need to add a little bit of the selection. Everything else is selected pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from the object selection to quick selection. And then if I need to, I can um, reduce the size of my brush a little bit or enlarge it by using the left or right bracket key. And then I'm going to click in here. Just click. And I'm going to add just a little bit to the selection in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. That really is. Uh, the, so I'm just clicking a few times to get a nice selection here. And if I need to remove from the selection, hold down the Option key. And that will take a little piece out of it. But um, the problem is, is that the colors in her are so close to the background color, you know, her that um, it's difficult for it to distinguish. And I'm gradually getting a nice selection in there. So now I can zoom back out. That's really the only part that really needs to be done. But you can see in this selection, it's missing some nice soft strands of hair out here, maybe at the edge of her little, her, you know, top knot, and out here along the edge and along the top just a little bit. So where we want to go next in order to do that is what we want to do at the very top is with the quick selection or the selection tool selected, we can go to select and mask. And that's going to take us to another place here. Okay. So in the top here, we have by default view and overlay. And for us, that works just fine right now. If you want to see it on the background, then you can do that. And that'll give you an idea of what it's going to look like when we actually 
clean up that selection a little bit. You can see that it needs a little cleanup. Um, there's other options for you too. That's what this button is up in the right hand corner. I'm going to leave it on overlay for the moment because that will be just fine for us. Um, you can pick whatever you want. It's worth exploring the different possibility. Um, I'm going to select uh, smart radius here and then I'm going to begin over here and start adding to our selection. And to do that, over to the left, we have a new group of tools over here. And it's this second one down right here, Refine Edge Brush Tool. So what I'm going to do with a fairly small brush is I'm going to just go kind of halfway, half over the her head and half over the, the, um, the, the mask part. And as you can see, I'm just, it's, it's really very subtle, but I can go ahead and I can begin to add some of the, those little, and I'm just brushing in here, just ever so lightly. And I'm gonna go ahead and brush in here in the bottom a little bit in here. And I'm gonna click and drag over those soft hairs and try to add those a little bit. And hopefully they've been added. And then over here, down in the lower right-hand corner, see, I want that mask and that mask. And to get an idea of how it's going to look before I click OK, I'm going to switch to on background layers. And notice how I've added some of those soft little hairs. I mean, I could probably go back in and tweak it a little bit more. But for demonstration purposes, I'm kind of happy with it. And I think it looks OK. And I do think it looks better than what they have. And probably what I also want to do now is I, maybe I want to smooth the edges a little bit. I don't want to feather them. I want to smooth it just a little bit. So maybe I'll go up to four or five, soften this so that, especially along the top here, I don't get you know, a hard, jaggy edge. If I need to shift the edge in or out, I could use this one down here. If I need to add contrast, I can do that. So there's all these little things that we can do, adjustments that we can make here. One of the last things that we want to do, though, to really refine this and to work non-destructively, which is something that I've emphasized again and again and again, is that I want to decontaminate the background colors. So what that does is it looks for whatever background colors are in the original photograph and it will automatically remove them. Okay, and you can see it's actually improved some of that a little bit back here as well and up here. And then the very last thing, the part that I like best is what I wanted to is I want to output to a new layer with a layer mask. And so what that does since I keep you know, emphasizing working non-destructively, is that it leaves the original layer intact. So I didn't really need to make a duplicate of that layer. And so now what I can do is I can click OK. And there you go. We have her isolated from the background, but you'll notice that it turned off this layer and it created a brand new layer with a layer mask. So layer masks are stencils, basically. And they enable you on a specific layer to reveal parts and to hide parts. And they are really, really important because um, they too are non-destructive. I can work in a couple of different ways. I can work destructively or not. I can throw away the mask and make this selection permanent. <clears throat> or I can throw away the mask and I can reveal, um, you know, go back to the original the original photograph. So to quickly show you how to do that, because I may, I don't want to run out of time today. I'm going to go ahead and click just on the mask and I'm going to throw it away in the trash can. And it's going to ask me, do you want to apply the mask before removing the later layer? Um, and I'm going to say, um, no, I'm just going to say delete. And it takes me back to where I was, but notice how it's kind of goofed up now. Okay, so let me undo and let's go back. So we have that again. Now let's try that again. If I go ahead and I click and I drag and I throw that in the trash. And so I do want to apply it. So now that is a permanent change. But remember, you know, I have this one 
So that's okay if I do that. But I prefer keeping it at the moment. So I'm going to undo that and keep it. And you'll see why in a minute. I just like, you know, especially if I'm happy with, with layer masks and it took me a while to create it, um, which it didn't in this instance, but if I want it, I can do that. I can always go back to that layer if I want to. <clears throat> and again, because memory is cheap and we always have ample to do what we want in here, um, it's a non-issue. If you do start to run out of memory, you know, with your computer, then start simplifying. But I would save, you know, your file in intermediate steps, like, you know, version one, two, three, four, five. So you can always go back to a previous version. So that would be my suggestion. So what I want to do now is I'm going to bend her head back. Okay. Now to do that, we need to use Puppet Warp. But to use Puppet Warp, you can't have a layer mask. So remember, working on destructively, I'm just going to go ahead and click on this layer. And I'm going to drag it into a new layer to duplicate it. Now I will throw away that mask. So I haven't work destructively. Oh, come on. Click and drag on it, throw it in the trash. And yes, I want to it to apply. So there. So now I have one version of her isolated head without a mask and one with. In order to bend her, her head back and use puppet warp, warp uh, repeat, you cannot have um, a layer mask. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to edit. And what I want to do is I want to use puppet warp right here. Boom. And you'll notice the little triangulation that appears here. Well, what we want to do is we want to fix points that remain static. And then we want to leave other points um, unpinned so that they can be moved and rotated. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And I'm going to start by clicking. And notice as I click, it adds at these little junctures, these little push pins. Okay, so I'm going to bring it all the way up to maybe here. There we go. And then I'm going to go across here. Let's do this in a couple of steps, like so. And then I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to come down here. And down here, and down here, and down here. I might have too many of them, and I may not have enough. We'll see. So all of this part remains fixed, and it allows this part up here to rotate. Now, to rotate it, what I do is I click on that, and then I hold down the Option key. And as soon as I hold down the Option key, with that pin selected, notice that this little ring appears. When I do that, see how I can move my mouse and I can allow her head to tilt back based on that pivot point. And when I'm happy with it, if I'm happy with those results and I haven't moved any parts that I don't want moved, then I'm good to go. And that works really, really nicely for us. So that's a good choice. And then when I'm done with that, I come up here and I select, you know what? I goofed. Oh, I am recording. Okay, good. I did start the recording. Um, I thought I had, I had forgotten. I guess my mind is someplace else. I apologize. So now that I'm good with that, I can click on the little checkbox and it fixes it and it does make it permanent. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So the next step that we want to do and again, this is probably going to go pretty quickly, this demonstration, is that I want to create a, a shadow for her. And that's different from under the effects panel, adding a drop shadow. So what I want to do is I want to use this layer as a layer mask. So I need to duplicate this again. So I'm going to take this layer, and this time I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it. And um, the top layer, I'm going to name it shadow is to show you what happens here. All right. Now, to select the outline of this, I hold down the Command key, and I click on it like so. 
And now what I do is I want to fill it with black. So I go back to my default foreground and background colors, which are black and white. And I hold down the option key and I click delete. And that fills it with black. So this is going to be my shadow and I'm going to move the layer down so that it's beneath it. And I also probably want to change the, um, the opacity of it. And I want to affect, um, I want to use the skew so that I can go ahead and I can move it over and make it a little bit more, um, what do you want to call it? The, prom the, the shadow kind of prominent. So let's start by moving the shadow beneath it, beneath the other layer, just by moving it down physically. And now what I can do is I can to skew it. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to, um, where am I going to go here? Transform and I'm going to select skew. Now what I can do is I can click the middle one here, hold down the shift key and drag it over like so. And that skews it over. So the shadow itself is really, really, really exaggerated. And when I'm done, I click the checkbox like so. Now, shadows like this are not opaque. They need to be transparent. So on this particular layer, I can come up to opacity and I can change it, you know, maybe 50%, 40%, 30%, 35%. And that looks pretty good. So now I have isolated her from the background. I've tilted her head. And using all the same, you know, but variations of the outline of, of her, I've been able to create a nice shadow. Now notice the, the subtlety here that I'm, I've added that. Now this could be refined and I could go back with this one and I could refine this selection again if I wanted to. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do and the last thing, how are we doing? Boy, it's taken me what, 10 minutes to do this. So this is a quick lesson, but as I said, an important one. So what I want to do now, <clears throat> um, actually, you know what? I'm going to turn her off. I'm going to turn this one on and I'm going to move this one up and see. Yeah, this one actually looks a little bit nicer than the original one. This one here, I don't like that. But her head isn't tilted and you can't do that. So, you know, Let's, let me go ahead and just turn that back on and let's move that back. But that's just, you know, that's the way it goes. Let's turn that on. There we go. So um, next step, what we want to do is we want to create a selection of her glasses. So this is going to be depart a little bit from the book again, because they've made some uh, important changes to, to Lightweight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select her isolated layer. And again, I'm going to switch and I'm going to use the object selection tool. And I'm going to click and drag around the glasses. And you'll notice I have a pretty good selection of them all just already. So I'm going to switch back now to um, quick selection tool. And I'm going to add a little bit to the selection here just to make sure I have all the glasses and I don't want any of her, the bridge of her nose be removed. So I need to remove that. So I'm holding down the option key. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit back here. So let's take part of the shadow out of there. Option key. So I'm just refining that just a little bit. And I'm going to go back here. And there we have it. Option just to remove just a little bit. And now I need to zoom in remove some of the lens here. Now, there's another way that we can do this. Um, let me start by, cre you know, reducing the size of this a little bit, holding down the option key and clicking in here. And I should be able to get a pretty good selection. Let me go ahead and add to the selection back here so I get a better selection of the glasses and continue to hold down the option key so that and if I need to reduce the size of the brush to get um, be able to isolate the lens a little bit more. So let me go ahead and reduce the size again, left bracket key. Let's come down here, a little tiny brush, hold down the option key, 
and click in here until I you know, pretty much get most of it you know, removed. And if I need to add pixels, I add, pull down the option key to remove. So let's go back here. And that looks pretty good. Uh, zoom out a little bit. And that's a pretty good selection. I can refine that another way. Um, but I'll show you in just a second here. Now I have a little bit from up here that I need to, to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and add to the selection here. I'm going to remove from the selection here. Pull down the option key. There we go. So that's a pretty good selection. Now I'm ready to colorize. But again, if I colorize her, um, or I colorize the glasses on this layer, it becomes permanent and I want to work non-destructively. So one of the things that I might consider doing is hit Command J. And what that does is it takes that and it puts the glasses on its own layer. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not working on the original layer. I'm working on this one. Now, another thing that we can do too, let me go back and I'm gonna hit Command and click to make that selection, but I'm gonna select her layer. Now, another thing that way that we can adjust the, um, the selection here is we can use something called Quick Mask. And to do that, I'm gonna click right here below the foreground and background color. And notice how it turns everything except for the glasses, red. That's similar to what we had before. So red detects the area that's masked. Um, the visible part is unobstructed and you can see that clearly. Now, if I wanna to add to that manually, I can. And you can do that by using your brush tool. And it only works, so I need to change the configuration of my brush. I just want a round brush and um, Let's go ahead and I want to make it nice and hard. And that's seven pixels and that's a good size. So now when I click, notice how I just, you know, by working with black, notice how I'm removing part of the selection. And if I were to turn quick mask off, notice that that's adding to the selection there. Now, if I want to remove that, then I switch from um, black to white and I can paint back in here and now I'm adding to the mask. Okay, so that would be another way and that's one of the things that the book has emphasized in here. So again, if I wanted to remove parts, boom, or add to the mask, I should say, work with white. I'm going to undo that if I want to uh, do just the opposite and I can go ahead here and Notice how I'm adding to the mask here so that now part of her face is selected. So that's how that works. And when you're all done, you have to remember to turn off quick mask. Now I'm ready to colorize. So probably one of the first things that I want to do is I want to pick a color here. So I'm going to pick um, a color that I've used before, but if you don't have one, you can click here. And let's select from the greens and create kind of a nice I have a uh, darkish green in here, forest green. And then what I can do, colorize this is really important. I can make a little bit bigger brush. And underneath, not here, not under the, the um, eraser tool, but underneath the paint brush, I can say color replacement tool. And what that does is it leaves the gray scale, the black, white, and grays intact, but it just takes color and replaces that. So now I can freely, should be able to freely change in here, or draw in here. Let's see if I'm doing this right. Oh, wrong layer, that's why. I gotta go back up here. So let me turn that off and see if I, yeah, see how it started to do that. I need to change that. So I need to work on that layer that I created for just the glasses. And now I can just, since it's already selected and isolated, I just click and drag over the whole thing. And the selection prevents any of the pixels being changed outside of the selection. And by me 
um, hitting Command J when I had the selection of the glasses um, early on, it allowed me to um, uh, isolate just the glasses here, and that's it. And that works pretty nicely. And if that's too much, you know, if you wanted to change that, we could always change the opacity of this and allow some of the other glasses to show through. And notice how that darkens it a little bit. And that actually works pretty nicely. That works really, really well. And there you have it. That's, um, that is the lesson for today and how much time I've used 20 minutes to do this. It shouldn't take you that long. So when we're done, you can get out of here and you can have a nice weekend. Um, while I have attendees up, do any of you have any questions? Because this is the extent of my, um, my demonstration today. This one goes very quickly. And lesson five will go quickly too, but I'm gonna save that for um, Wednesday. But now would be a good time to talk about the postcard assignment, okay? So <clears throat> um, let's talk about that a little bit. A question, I have a question, question. Let me go ahead and answer that. Um, can I do Puppet Warp again? I sure can, sure. So what you need to do with Puppet Warp, um, let me go ahead and say I'm answering live and I'm done. So Markisha would like to know how to use Puppet Warp. So I'm gonna turn off all these layers that I created from before. I'm going to go back to this one with the um, the, uh, the layer mask. What I need to do in order to use Puppet Warp is I need to get rid of the mask. So um, you can't use Puppet Warp with a layer mask. So I'm just going to take the whole layer and I'm going to make a copy of it. And to do that, I hit Command J, or if you forget, click on the layer and drag it on the new layer but tab down at the bottom. So now I have a copy of that layer. And so now what I can do is I can turn off the layer beneath it and I'm gonna throw away the clipping mask. And I'm gonna throw it away in the trash can and it's gonna prompt me and it's gonna say, do you want to apply the mask before removing? I'm gonna select yes. Now I can warp this. So <clears throat> to warp it, what I need to do is I need to go to edit make sure that that layer is selected. Go to edit and select puppet warp. And again, this little triangulation or polygonal you know, view appears. And now what I want to do is I want to fix certain parts and allow certain parts to be um, edited. So for example, if I really wanted to make really weird changes to this, I could click on an edge of her forehead I, and then I could come back here and I could move it. Whoops, I don't want to move that. I just want to move. Let me see. I didn't want to do that. Let me undo that. Let me clear that. So I'm going to clear that and do that again. Edit. I'm trying to be fancy here and it's not working for me. Well, let's go back to Puppet Warp. So now what I can do is I can, let's go ahead in here and I'll, I'll just do what I've done before, make sure that you understand how to do that. So now I wanna fix certain parts. So I now I use the push pins here to fix these elements around here. And I want it to pivot about the middle of her neck. So I'm adding couple of pins along here and you pin them where there are intersections. And then I come down here and I pin them along here so that these parts do not move. And then what I do is I click on the back one so that one you can see with the little ring around it is highlighted and then I hold down the option key or alt key if you're on a PC and notice that ring that appears. Now I can click and I can drag and that allows me to pivot her head back. You can really distort it. Now this can be useful for a lot of things. Um, if you have a tree that you want to, you know, move a branch and distort it, um, you can do that and it works really nicely. 
really, really nice one. So um, let's go ahead and click OK. And let me do that again. Let's try some other things because um, there's some other features that you might want to explore. Not just for this, but for later on. That with this layer selected, one of the other things that I could do is I could go to, um, let's go to layer and uh, let's go to filter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to liquefy. This could be kind of nice. This takes us to a new, new area here. And um, there's some useful YouTube videos that you might want to look at and explore on how um, and advertising for many years now using Photoshop, they have used them to create, quote, the ideal model. And so if you want, I mean, I can come in here and I can, you know, distort her nose like so. Um, I can distort her chin like so. And you can do all sorts of stuff with this. Um, by changing the size of the brush, by changing some of the tools over here. So if I you know, undo a couple of those times, a couple of times and make the brush a little bit smaller. And let me zoom in a little bit so I can see a little bit better in here. Let's go ahead and let's use the pinch tool. Here. I'm just going to take the tip of her nose and pull it out just a little bit. Now let's take her chin and let's move it in a little bit. Okay, and let's take her forehead and I'm going to take a, a larger brush here. And I'm going to bulge that out a little bit. So now she has a predominantly weird kind of a, maybe had a goiter or down here. So there's, you know, numerous ways you can distort the features. And so that's, you know, if you ever wondered, you know, why models look the way they do is that because most of the time um, they've been highly retouched and trimmed and necks have been extended and all sorts of things. Um, and if you're happy with it, you can click OK. And if you're not, you go back. So that's another tool that you have at your disposal, the liquify tool. And that's found under filter. But um, Markeisha, does that answer your question about um, how to use Puppet Warp? Yeah, OK. Any other questions that you guys have? Since we got plenty of time, we have. I was going to go and show you. Um, yeah, OK. Um, let's talk about. Um, let's go back here and I'm going to bring my website into here and let's talk about the first assignment, which is the postcard assignment. If I go to Kirk's classes, um, unfortunately, um, I only have one example to show you. And if I come in here, where is it? It's right here. So this one, if, if you look at the way the assignment is written, is that it is um, a black and white postcard. And what I want you to do um, is to take a minimum of, of four separate images and begin to combine them together. So you're going to have to find, you know, preferably your own images. But if you want to combine images that you found on the internet, you can do that as well. And you can do a simple Google search. But probably what you want to do is, um, and I'll show you that in a minute, is that you want to make sure that those images um, can be used for um, the purposes of copying and duplicating and modifying. Um, but this is one of the, the good examples. And then I'd like you to incorporate a little bit of type, similar to what we did in, in really the first assignment. OK, so this one sort of has a satanic um, overtone to it, but it's used many of the same images and duplicated them over and over. 
and it's um, you know changed the, the opacity of some of the layers. And you can see how the hands have been duplicated again and again and replicated. But the, the hardest part of this is number one, coming up with a, a good concept. Number two is finding images that are of a, a, a good size that you can use. And again, the postcard needs to be a minimum of three by five inches, ideally maybe five by seven inches, and it can be vertical or horizontal. It can be any theme you want. It can be a vacation theme. It can be, um, you know, humorous. It can be serious. It can be, you know, otherworldly. It can be, you know, whatever you want. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you. And then again, where you're going to find that assignment is again, we go up to Kirk's classes and we go down to handouts. You know, if I scroll down here in Art 192, here's the postcard assignment right here. And that takes us there. Okay. Now, back in the day when we were scanning images, I preferred the images to be at 300 dots per inch or pixels per inch. Um, however, I want your postcard to be a minimum of 200 pixels per inch. So now, um, you know, look this over. Um, make sure, and, and again, I'm going to change it a little bit too. It does not have to be black and white. It can be either or, or maybe even a combination if you want to do something, black and white and color. Um, it's really kind of open-ended in that right way. The important part is to have a minimum of four images and to combine them and to make it look seamless so that I can't tell that it was cut out from another um, uh, uh, photograph. Okay? So that will utilize all the tools and techniques that we've learned in the past couple of lessons and using, you know, to be able to isolate parts of images and to work with multiple layers and all that good stuff. Okay, now to find an image um, that you can readily use, you might want to do a simple Google search. So let me look at, at images here. And I'm going to look at um, uh, sunflowers. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to look at images. So that's my Google search and I click here. And now I can also look at tools to find different things. Probably what you want to do if you ever plan on using this in your portfolio is to check the usage rights. That if you want to look for Creative Commons licenses, that would be the best choice. Because oftentimes it's, you know, copyrights were a bundle of rights and by default, if you use a, a standard copyright law, everything is protected. But some people choose to allow others to copy and to um, modify as long as you allow other people to do the same. And also, um, some people will allow you to use it for commercial purposes without um, any um, repercussions. And the other thing is, is that sometimes the only thing that they want, if you do use their image as is, is to make sure that they get credit for it. So let's go ahead and look at the ones by Creative Commons. And there's a bunch of them. And you can see that there's a bunch here, you know, licensable, you know, some of them, uh, when you click on them, um, it will let you know what the license is or what it is, isn't, you know, usable. Um, so let's look at this one just for the heck of it and see what we have. So if we want to look at the license details, we can click here. Um, copyright only dedication based on United States law. Okay, so that's all. Um, okay. So we can go back. So that's what that law is. Um, for our purposes, I don't know that it's a big issue, but I know that I do when I talk about it in my web class, that um, because you will be publishing it, and if someone happens upon your website and sees their image that you've used, they might come after you, um, you might get a, a cease and desist order from their attorney. But just I wanted to make you all aware of that sort of thing. Okay. So, you know, there's the, that was the sample that I showed you. And let's move this down here. 
and that's pretty much it for today. We've uh, we still got lots of time to spare. Are there any other questions that you have for me before I um, stop recording and we end this and I make it available to everybody? No other questions? I'm not seeing, I'm only seeing questions and answers. Um, you do have a question. Okay, Cynthia, go for it. Um, do you want to speak aloud? Or do you want to? Um, I can always allow you to come over here and it says, let's see, it's Cynthia Valencia. So let me, uh, if you want to talk, you're allowed to talk now if you wish. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I had um, a couple questions. So if I wanted to use my own, um, like pictures that I've taken, okay. how do I, um, in the layering, how do I edit one photo and then attach it to the postcard? Because I know here we've had, for example, in today's example, we already have the background um, kind of already assigned. And so okay, good okay. question. So yeah, go ahead, continue, and I will answer that. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah, no, it was just mostly that one. How do I um, like attach my, like um, if I take a picture or a, a edit from another photo, how do I attach it to my postcard and things like that? Okay, this, let me show you how I would start my file. Okay? okay. So this is how I would start my lesson. This will, will be a good way of us finishing up our lesson today. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say file new. And this is where I would go. I would just say file new. And then I'm going to, you know, try to work at 300 pixels per inch, but maybe I can't. Um, so let's, I'm going to say 240. If you're working with your own images and if they're already digital images, then 240 pixels per inch would be a good size. Then I'm going to predetermine the width and the height of my um, postcard. So I'm going to say that the width, you know, you need to know in advance. Are you going to or have a pretty good idea? You can always change it later, but it's best if you can have a pretty good idea that if I want this to be a vertical postcard, then I'm going to make this um, the width of it, maybe five inches here. So I'm going to go ahead and select five. And then the height that I want to, is going to be seven. These are just standard postcard sizes. And I'm going to use the background color of white. And there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and close her. So here's my postcard. Now all you have to do is you need you need other images to drag into it. So if I wanted to, um, let me take um, an image that I've done. Um, this would be of of my dog, okay, that I've used for other things. So I need to change this because it's a horizontal image. You know, I'm I'm doing this on the fly, so I'm thinking of how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go under image, canvas, ro or, you know, I want canvas rotation. And I'm going to clockwise, uh, let's do clockwise 90 degrees. There we go. So now I have that. Now I'm going to go on my desktop. And you can't see my desktop, but I have an image of my dog. So I need to hide this for a minute. Um, let me go ahead here. I'm going to um, go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And I'm going to move this up. And I have to, you're just, hopefully you're just looking at me for the moment. So I'm going to look at, I'm working with a couple of screens here. So I need to find my image. I'm going to move this back in here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share again, again. So here's my image. Let's go ahead and share. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that. So this, can everybody see the, hopefully I've done this correctly. Everybody can see my screen. Yeah. With uh, the white canvas. Okay, good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the image that I have of my dog. And I'm going to open it in Photoshop too. So I'll double click on it and it happens to be a Photoshop file. So there's there's bagel. Okay, bagel at the beach. And maybe I want to put a sailboat back there or I want to put a, a person behind her or I want to, you know, 
I want to do a variety of things, but you can see that I've already done a ton of stuff to her in Photoshop to make this image the way I want it. Well, how do I combine this with the other image? <clears throat> if I only wanted her, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off just her. You know, I've already isolated her. Okay. And you can see that there's some problems here that, with it, but that's okay for our purposes. You want to make sure that the, the little bags around her head and stuff, you know, they're not the way they should be. But you can see I have nice soft edges of her of her tail and stuff, and that's how I, I use this image. Now what I can do with that layer selected, I can use the move tool and I can click and drag it up to my new image and I can drag it back down and release. And there you go. Now that's a big image. That's really what you want to see, that you would prefer to have it bigger. Now I can hit command T to transform and I'm going to hold down the shift and the option key and I'm going to make it smaller. Now I have her, you know, inside my, my new image. Now, if you have another background image and maybe I do, I can go ahead and I can open that. So I'm going to open this in Photoshop. I have a JPEG file <clears throat> that I'm going to open in Photoshop. And I don't know if this image is going to be big enough or not. So I have this image here. It's, and I want to put bagel inside instead of the ocean. I want to put her inside this mountain landscape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move this image into my untitled one. And I want it to be centered. So to do that, when I pull this down, I hold down the shift key and I release. Okay. Now I need her to be below the bagel image. There you go. Bagel is inside the mountains now. She's not inside that. But you'll notice that we have um, some issues here. Now, there are some other ways that we can fix that um, that, we that we haven't covered yet that I have um, that I can quickly cover right now is that I can take a selection here. Let's do that. Make sure that I have that background layer. And I'm going to go ahead and with the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to select a chunk of this background like so. And I want to stretch it, but I don't want to distort it. So what I can do with that layer and that part selected, I can go to edit and I can go to, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to file. Oh, I thought it was edit. Oh, it is edit. Make sure that I have the right layer selected. Yeah, there we go. Make sure that that, le that layer is selected, and I don't think it was. So I need to go under Edit. And what I want to do is I want to use um, Content-Aware Scale. Okay, now what I can do is I can move this up like so and fill in the gaps, because it's a really small gap, and it's not an essential critical part of my photograph. And now I can go ahead and I can click Return or I can click the little checkbox and that fills up the gap and no one will be the wiser. And I can do the same with the bottom down here. I can click a little segment of this, you know, a little chunk of it like so and drag over that. And remember, I'm just selecting the, um, uh, the background layer. I'm not selecting bagel, the bagel layer here. So um, again, I'm going to go back under edit. And I can go to content aware scale, and then I'm going to go ahead down here, and I'm going to pull that down like so to, to fill out that gap and click OK. Now I'm good to go. Now I can continue to add other elements and change her, but you know, with a little must or fuss, you can see that um, it, she looks pretty believable inside that scene, um, with some exceptions of the my selection up here because I had it layered on some other layers that it really didn't matter. Um, but, you know, for a really quick demonstration here, it, it looks pretty believable. And I might want to soften some edges when I'm done or blur some edges and that sort of thing just to make it look even more believable um, and adjust the, the mask that I had created for her and that sort of thing. Because um, typically masks or images are not really as crisp as what you see here. They, they're softened a little bit. 
is if you look at the background here and these other edges, they're really not that crisp or softened. But notice that I also copied the, when I isolated her, um, I isolated the shadow as well. That was important to me. And because the sand is sort of ripply and it actually kind of fits the, the landscape of my background here, and that works okay too. So the photograph of Bagel is the one that, that I took and I'm combining it with an image that I found on the internet and making it work for me. But I made sure that that background image was plenty large um, so that it works with a, 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 a postcard size that I had created. And the same with the size of bagel. I mean, I took, I have an iPhone and the images that you will create with your, with most smartphones are gonna be plenty big. Um, in fact, um, I'm trying to remember because the default resolution when I save it as a JPEG is 240 pixels per inch and it's about 11 by 13 or something. It's a pretty good size image. Does that answer your questions? Does that help everybody? Yes, that was extremely helpful. Thank you. Yeah, so to make that, um, again, one of the common mistakes that people make is say, okay, I wanna use that, that landscape as my background image. And then I'm gonna place all my images into it, but you never double check to make sure that it is um, the right size and the right resolution. But if you start with a blank background that is the right size and the right resolution, anything, any other image that you drag into it will automatically be um, reconfigured to the resolution of that, um, that image. Now, if I were to go back and I were to, to, to add another image that is, that is only 72 pixels per inch, that's really, really small, um, it will conform to that 240 or that pixels per inch, and it will really shrink down. It will become really, really small, and you'll notice immediately that it wasn't originally big enough for you to use. Does that make sense, I hope, for everybody? You'll see. Um, give it a try over the weekend, and then we'll see when, if any of you have questions next week. I can show you that. Okay. Um, for the postcard image, actually, no, don't flat. I mean, you can, um, the question from Markeisha is um, for the postcard, should you flatten the image like you did with the, the C items assign, assignment or leave it in layers? Um, I would prefer that when you share it and I look at it in um, Google Drive that I look at it with all the layers, but if you want to um, make a copy of it. So this is what I would do. I would save this file like this. I would go file, you know, file, save as. And I'm, I'm going to save this as a Photoshop file. Okay, so it's, you know, I don't want it in lesson six. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Um, let's see here, where's my desktop? There we go. And I'll just name it um, Mountain Bagel. There's a Photoshop file. This is what I would prefer that you guys um, send to me because I'd like to see all the layers and see how that you how you um, use clipping masks and how you, you combined everything and maybe added some adjustment layers as needed and that sort of thing. For yourself, if you want a flattened image, then by all means, and then you could create a separate image for that. And so to do that, you could go to image and you could select duplicate. So now I have a copy of that. And if you want to call it bagel copy or you want to call it um, mountain bagel um, flattened, I could do that. So I have a new name for it and I have a copy, but you'll notice it has all the layers. But now what I can do is I can come up to my little flyout window here in the layers panel and I can come down here and I can flatten the image. Then you can keep this one for yourself. Okay. 
so that if you want to share it at some time in the future and you want to save it as a JPEG, or if you want to um, print it for any reason or have somebody else print it and you don't want them goofing up the layers and all the, the things that you did um, then to it, then that would be a good one to use. But you now you have duplicates, one with you know all the layers and one that's been flattened. Okay. How do you check the DPI to make sure it's correct for the assignment? You go with the image open. Remember, if you start it with a blank image, you don't need to worry. But now when you look at it, when you open up the image, um, let me go back to the rustic landscape. So this one I pulled off the internet. And I don't know how, I mean, I know how big it is, but I don't know, because this is in inches, that's big, but anything that you pull off the internet is 72 pixels per inch. But when I change it to, to 240, um, I don't know how big it's going to be. So with this image selected, I can go to image, image size. And now what I can do is that make sure that you turn off resample. And I'm going to change it from 72 to 240. And it shows me right here, this is a pretty big image. It's, the width is going to be eight inches. The height is going to be four and a half inches. That's perfectly OK. And you can see how, with the rulers up, that that's changed. And this will be plenty big for my background. It's, you know, the, the height isn't big enough. But as, you, as I showed you, because it's very close, I was able to use that um, uh, non-destructive version. Well, the, the scale, that's um, content-aware scale for the top and the bottom for that. But that's how you check that, OK? That's how you do that. So if you start with a blank image and you bring all of your images into it, you will see immediately, you know, if, if the image is big enough or not. Um, unfortunately, I don't have, I mean, I, let's see. I guess I have a few minutes. Let me go back to, um, let me pick a small sunflower here. So this is a big one. And I don't want to pick that. I want to find a small one just to demonstrate it. I want, um, I don't want any size. Let's just pick a medium size here. So I'm going to pick a uh, medium size. And let's pick, uh, let's pick this one here. Okay, here's the yellow one. And I'm going to right click on this. And, oh shoot, I need to use a different program. I need to use, here we go. So let me look at this again. Um, because uh, Google Chrome does weird things. It, it uses a different file type. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look up uh, again, but I'm using Safari right now. Um, what did I say? Sunflowers. So just doing the same thing. But in Safari, it doesn't do that. And again, I'm going to use tools, and I'm going to use size, and I'm going to use medium size. And let's see if I can find that image or something similar to it. Um, and I also said usage rights. Can I do that Creative Commons? Let's do that. Here it is. Let's do this one. So I'm going to click on it. And then here, yeah, it's a smaller image. It's 728 pixels by 485. That's small. For web, it's a good size, but for print, it's not. So I right click on here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save image as, and I'll save it on my desktop as sun, yellow sunflower. Okay, I'll save it on my desktop. Um, there we go. So now I can move this. And now I'm going to open it in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to File, Open. And I can open yellow sunflower. And there it is. There it is. So now I want to combine it. So 
what would be one of the ways of isolating this? Um, there's a couple of things that we could do. We could use the object selection tool, like so. And that does a pretty good job of it. Not perfect, but you can see that. Now I'm going to go ahead and move it. And I'm going to move it to um, our new bagel. Let's use it, this one here. And I'm going to bring it in here. Actually, it's a pretty good size. It came out OK, changing it to 240 pixels per inch. But you know, I didn't know that. But it will shrink. Uh, if I needed it bigger, then not a good idea. I mean, I can select that layer and transform it. And I can make it much, much bigger. Uh, you'll have a big sunflower behind bagel. Um, but it already, it's starting, when you zoom in, or as I zoom in here, you can see that the image is starting to get blurry. But bagel in front of her and the image behind the image is really crystal clear. So that's one of the downsides of taking a small image and enlarging it. That you really should not do. So does that help you? That's how you, that, those are different ways of checking to see how things work. No, no. I've got a big sunflower behind bagel here. That's a really big one. Okay. Is that it for today, folks? Um, any questions? Any more questions before we leave today? I'm going to go back here to our roll sheet. I'm going to take more roll since some of you have added. Uh, come in afterwards. So Giovanni's here. I think I already have Andy Hernandez, which I do. Um, Cynthia, I have Delvin Pitts is here. And you're from the other section. So D Pitts, that's just fine. I have Kevin, Diana Rock. Um, what section are you in, Diana? You're in the other one. So I have Diana Rock. So I need to add you guys later. And I have Marquisha, and I have Kevin, Roberto, Vanessa. I think I have everybody. Um, let's see if we have more questions. Um, next question from Angel Zapata um, is, when is the postcard due? Probably in a few weeks. You have plenty of time. OK. So, but while you're working on the postcard, I will be introducing new lessons. So you're going to be working on both the postcard and the lesson at the same time. Okay. Does that help everybody? Yeah. So we did use up the hour, huh? Cool. So you should be all set for the weekend. <clears throat> Since most of you are probably going to stay in, in anyway, you know, um, you get the time to think about what kind of postcard you want to make. And in fact, you, you know, it can it can look retro, it can look futuristic, it can be, as I said, it can be humorous, it can be serious. Um, actually, the more personable, you know, you make it, um, probably the more interesting it will be. That isn't always the case, but. Um, if I were to use my own images in here, it will at least, you know, be of interest to me. I think that's the most important thing so that you can get engaged <clears throat> and immerse yourself with it within the assignment. Because <clears throat> I don't want to give assignments that are just, oh, I'm doing it because the teacher said, and you are to a certain extent, but I want them to um, them what they should do is demonstrate to me certain things that we have learned in the lessons so far. And it will, you know, do a variety of things. Number one, can you isolate an image effectively, for, you know, and then bring them together? 
Um, and then if you want to work in color or black and white, you can always flatten this and change it to black and white, or you can change a specific layer to black and white. I can go to the very top of this and I can go here. I can click here and I've turned this into a black and white image. That's under the adjustment layers. So you might want to play with that. Now I can come in here and I can play with, you know, the tones and I can really, you know, crank up, you know, and make this much richer. So it's a really nice black and white image. So if you would rather work with a black and white image, you're welcome to do so. Now, you know, as I said, all adjustment layers affect everything beneath it. So that's what's happening here. If I wanted to work on individual layers and adjust the black and whites within that, then that would be a different issue altogether. And I would talk about that on another day since we're at 10 after and we've run over our one hour. Okay. Okie doke. So if that's it for today, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say goodbye. And I'm going to say, you know, have a good weekend. And I'm going to pause the recording. And then as you guys leave, then I will end our webinar for today. Okay. Okie doke. So I'm going to pause the, if there aren't any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording.